I've been talking about different types of movement across cell membranes. So uh, in general, we've looked at things like individual ions being moved across the membrane through proteins like sodium ions and, and potassium ions or uh, larger molecules, but still relatively small, like simple, like sugar molecules or waste products that are moved uh, from with a protein through the interior of the protein and then across the phospholipid bilayer. They could be going out of the cell or into the cell, but in general, those sorts of processes of transport are what we've looked at, in addition to very small molecules and gases that can actually move across the phospholipid bilayer itself. Now what we're gonna look at is um, something a little broader. It, by the name, you can kind of get an idea of what we're gonna talk about. It's bulk phase transport, where we're talking about a lot of molecules being moved all at once. And those molecules could be moving, um, the molecules that moved could all be the exact same molecule, like many, many, many copies of the same thing, or it may be a whole variety of different molecules that are being moved across the membrane at the same time. Uh, and so, and in this case as well, we're not typically going to have them move across the phospholipid bilayer. We're gonna move the phospholipid bilayer with them. So it's going to kind of get into. So uh, two general categories we're going to have uh, endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis uh, is where something is uh, moving into the cell, or the cell is moving it inward, moving in, and exocytosis is where something's being removed from the cell. We'll go through go through those in general. Uh, I'll talk about some very specific cases uh, as well. So overall idea: here's our cell. This would be uh, an endocytotic uh, process. Where the cell itself begins to move the membrane inward, like this. And it buckles down in a this is one dimensional, it's flat here, but, but in three dimensions, imagine it's like, it's like taking a balloon and like pushing your finger and it's gonna like have this indentation, right, in the cell membrane. This is typically controlled by cytoskeletal proteins uh, pulling on it. Um, and it can be regulated specifically by receptors, which is something we're gonna talk about, or it may not be, and it may be very general or generic. But the idea is molecules outside the cell are then gonna be pulled in to this little compartment or vesicle. And then the membrane sort of join it together like this and fuse and then this vesicle will break free and be in the cell. So then usually what would happen is uh, it, it may join up with something like a lysosome. And then they may fuse together uh, so that the, the material brought into the cell can be digested or broken down you know, or processed. That's just kind of the, the general sort of idea. We have uh, categories, pinocytosis and phagocytosis. So now for pinocytosis, Generically, it could be referred to as sort of cellular drinking, right? It's where uh, liquid is brought into the cell, and it can be either um, totally uh, nonspecific for the types of molecules that come in with the liquid. So the idea is really just liquid, in this case, usually water, but it would be whatever the extracellular liquid is. is pulled into the cell in a vesicle form. Okay, so kind of like what we saw, we see here. Now there's a couple of reasons for doing that. One is to offset osmotic pressure. So as osmosis is occurring by if the cell happened to be losing water, this is one way to pull in a large amount of water all at once uh, in a vesicle to replenish that in the cytoplasm. In addition, it's actually to um, offset the loss you know, of um, 
some membranes uh, and, and compartments inside the cell um, through exocytosis. So in exocytosis, what we're going to have is liquid being kind of pushed out of the cell. Um, so kind of the reverse of this process. So in what we have, uh, exocytosis, usually this is a process that is happening with the um, endoplasmic reticulum and then the Golgi apparatus. And then we have these little shuttle vesicles that are moving back and forth between them. And then eventually these vesicles will move to the outer part of the cell. They'll fuse with the cell membrane and then the contents will be removed from the cell. When the contents are removed, that means also in addition to the molecules that are being released from the cell, there's going to be water released from the cell. So in this way, the endocytosis, the pinocytotic endocytosis, is going to be bringing water in, while the exocytosis is going to be removing water outward. In addition to that, as exocytosis would actually add to the cell membrane, the pinocytosis would subtract from the cell membrane. And so again, the cell's maintaining balance uh, in terms of offsetting one process with another process. So pinocytosis is largely used to bring in liquid to offset processes like this where the liquid is lost. In addition to that, there's kind of a give and take of membrane uh, gained and lost so that the cell maintains uh, a sense of stability. Now, what, like I said, what liquid comes in here through pinos, what molecules are dissolved in the liquid coming in through pinocytosis are pretty much just whatever happens to be in the extracellular fluid, right? Um, it's not, not necessarily specific, but we can have a type that is specific. So we can, where we can concentrate specific molecules. We call this receptor mediated endocytosis. So uh, let me get rid of this term down here. And we'll kind of look at this, this process overall. So. Let's say this is a cell membrane. In this membrane, we're going to have several transmembrane proteins, and these proteins are going to be receptors. Now previously, we looked at you know structure of the membrane, all sorts of functions and activities of the membrane. One of those is where receptors are relaying cell signals. Or molecules like receptors that are transmembrane proteins like this instead can be uh, involved in adhesion. So where uh, cadherins, like proteins embedded in the membrane, can bind to cadherins of other. In this particular case, these receptors are binding cargo molecules. So they're very specific. So that's the idea of all proteins is that they have they bind something else and change shape and that their binding is specific. Here, binding into this receptor is what we're referred to as a cargo molecule. So just generic, you know, for now, that's just the, the overall example. So the cargo molecule will bind to the receptor, the receptor will change shape, and then on the inside of the cell, a molecule from the cytoplasm, just the cytoplasmic side, binds to that receptor, and that molecule is a protein called clathrin. So cargo binds to the receptor, and the receptor binds to clathrin. Now, as more cargo molecules bind to these receptors, now this is all the same cargo molecule. So these are receptors of a particular class. They're all unique for this specific cargo molecule. So these are many copies of the exact same molecule all attaching to these receptors. Once they bind, then we get more and more copies of clathrin also attaching. Clathrin is a protein that binds to the other clathrins and then it changes shape. And its shape causes a pull on the membrane itself. So what's gonna happen here is that as the clathrin pulls, the, re 
receptor molecules. I'm going to kind of be moving inward here. There's the cargo. And um, this is clathrin. So this structure here that we're kind of looking at right here is called a clathrin coated pit. So it's like a little depression in the surface of the cell. Where the cell kind of dips down inward like this. It's like a little pit. And on the inside of the cell, on the cytoplasmic side, it's coated, it's covered with the protein clathrin. And again, this just looks like it's just like one string of them, but this is three dimensional. It's all around the entire surface of the pit is clathrin on the inside of the cell. Eventually what will happen, as I kind of did in this little simple you know, example over here, is that pit will continue to form until it forms a whole vesicle. And that vesicle will you know, have the cargo molecules inside it. And on the outside, it's completely covered with clathrin. And where's my cargo? There we go. So that becomes a, a vesicle. And then once uh, it's released into the cell, then again, it will um, usually in a series of steps, first the clathrin will be removed. It'll be uncoated. And then that little vesicle sometimes will release the cargo to the interior. And then the membrane will be opened up. Uh, it may bind again to a lysosome or to another structure, something that might be targeted in the cell specifically to go to. Uh, and then this piece of membrane can actually be recycled and it can actually come back to rejoin the cell membrane and the receptor is actually put back in place and then they can be reused over again. Um, so that's a, kind of the idea behind a much more specific idea of uh, transport across the membrane in bulk phase. So it's bulk phase transport, but it's receptor mediated. So that means there are specific receptors controlling which specific molecules are gonna come into the cell, but not just one at a time. There could be hundreds of these molecules all coming into the cell in this vesicle all at the same time. This is usually for bigger molecules, molecules that are more nonpolar, things that are difficult for the, the cell to move in or inefficient to move in one at a time. It moves them in uh, in larger groups like this. So there's that. The other thing I'm going to talk about uh, just briefly, we're not going to go into a lot of detail on this, is a, a very similar process, but now, you know, uniquely different, uh, the process of phagocytosis. So unlike pinocytosis, which is sometimes referred to as cellular drinking, phagocytosis is sometimes referred to as cellular eating. So this is kind of where we have one cell and perhaps another cell. So this could be another cell or an extremely large particle. But the idea here is a cell is made up of all kinds of molecules, lipids and carbohydrates and proteins, and DNA and RNA, not one specific molecule, many different things. And this large particle as well that we're referring to is something that is a conglomerate of many different uh, types of molecules. So now in phagocytosis, I'll give you an example, say from um, the immune system. Right. One process is that um, uh, a cell, like a bacteria uh, or a vi or not a, well, it's not a cell, a virus, uh, can be opsonized. So we can actually have the cell um, creating molecules that will then bind to the surface of an invader, tagging it. And this cell is a phagocyte, phagocytic cell, that uh, like a macrophage, something that's going to now eat another cell as part of your immune system it will have receptors that will bind to these other molecules. And so those molecules could be part of the bacteria itself. They, you know, they are just inherent for that species or there's something produced by your immune system that actually attaches to it. But either way, the bacteria in a way is tagged as being foreign. And this particular cell has a receptor that matches up with a tag on that cell. And so what's gonna then happen is you know, kind of sort of the same same type of thing here. Uh, that cell is then going to pull 
the other cell inward. Like this. So this, again, cytoskeletal proteins and uh, other molecules will kind of act on this to actually create the movement that's pulling this uh, inward. But this cell is then going to be consumed completely by the other cell. Until you have, you know, another vesicle formed. But now inside this vesicle uh, is, you know, some foreign bacterial cell, right? That happens to be, you know, labeled with specific proteins. And some of those proteins are bound uh, to receptors that are part of that phagocytic cell. And now this structure is called a phagosome. And usually, same thing, it might bind to a lysosome, which can then fuse to it, break down that other, other cell. And then from it, this cell here is going to get you know, its phospholipids, and it's going to get its carbohydrates, and it'll acquire proteins and amino acids and all these other molecules. So bulk phase, the transport into the cell isn't just a single ion or a few ions or uh, even a, a cluster here. It's a whole variety of molecules all brought into the cell all at the same time by actually eating another cell. Right? And that is a type of, technically a type of transport called bulk phase transport, where we're bringing these things into the cell. Uh, I said exocytosis uh, is usually where we're removing waste often, but it doesn't have to be waste. A lot of people will say that, but a lot of times cells have to release very specific signals to other cells, very important signals like hormones uh, to other cells to trigger them to do other things. And that those would also be released through exocytosis. So it isn't just for, for removal of waste. A lot of important molecules act outside the cell and then bind to other cells and they would... Uh, be released in that in that particular way. But at the same time, you know, all this time you're going to have some pieces of the membrane removed. So as this happens, this cell lost a chunk of its membrane, which means new membrane then has to be added to it, usually coming from uh, the endoplasmic reticulum where it's making membrane and then going to uh, through the Golgi apparatus and then binding binding to the membrane there. So that's kind of just an overview and a couple specific things. You should uh, look at specifically the uh, the details of the receptor-mediated endocytosis, where the receptors bind to the protein clathrin, form the pit, and that pulls into the cell to form the vesicle, and then it's uncoated and, and can be recycled. And the others just know the basic terminology for endo versus exocytosis and pino versus uh, phagocytosis. And that's pretty much it.